I'd just got home from my job delivering pizzas in a small town in North Carolina, and my heart is still pounding. I just started recently and this was my first night shift. I hope it's my last. I was going back to the store after delivery, a little after 9pm, when I saw it riding towards me on a bicycle. It looked like a person for the most part, but it was wearing one of those black plastic Halloween masks like you can get at any store. The mask had a wavy line from the top left to the bottom right, which separated the mask into a purple half and an orange half. I couldn't tell what it was wearing because it was too dark and the clothes were black. Out of the top of the mask there was something that could have been hair, but it seemed too strange to me. The hair was at least a foot tall on its own, and the only way I can describe it is as a plant of some sort. It looked like a bunch of tangled branches and vines all sprouting from the thing's head. It was doing a wheel stand all the way down the street towards me without losing an iota of balance. The thing that really tipped me off that this thing wasn't human, though, was the aura it gave off. I couldn't stop looking at it for more than a second. It drew my eyes almost magnetically, and every second I looked at it, the more terrified I felt. It wasn't just my natural reaction of fear, either. This was powerful and evil. My head started pounding. I was screaming involuntary, and tears welled up in my eyes. I was about to make a turn when I saw it coming towards me, and as soon as I completed the turn, barely able to look at where I was going, the thing disappeared. I turned around to look back down the street I was just on, and it was just gone. I was still extremely rattled, panting and whining like a dog, but I knew I had to make it back to the store. I made a slight left onto the long avenue where my store is located when I saw it riding towards me again, still doing a wheel stand. It started out on my right, but rode around me to get on my left as I proceeded towards the store. I was trying my best to outrun it, but it was keeping up with me exactly, until it suddenly jumped off the bike onto the sidewalk and caught it without effort. I was still screaming and tearlessly crying this whole time, but I whipped my truck into the store lot, hoping it meant safety. To my horror, I saw a bicycle, not belonging to anyone in the store, leaned up against the wall directly in front of my parking spot. I looked across the street to where I had seen the thing hit the ground and saw that nothing was there. I hesitated to even leave my truck, but I had to complete my shift, so I went inside with my guard up as much as it could be considering how terrified I was. My co-workers were all fine, but there were no customers in the store. That's not unusual considering the time of night but that meant that the bicycle's owner was MIA. I rubbed my face for a few moments in front of a fan and grabbed my next delivery. I exited the store to discover the bicycle was gone, even though I hadn't noticed anyone move it. I worked the rest of my shift until 10 and didn't see the thing again. That's not to say that there was nothing out of the ordinary, but the bike stalker was gone at least. The whole way home I was unnaturally paranoid, Around every curve and corner I feared it would be standing in the road waiting for me. I could see it in my head. The vision I had of it standing on a certain bridge on my way home felt so real that I nearly drove into the creek. I'm home now in what I hope is safety, but I'm definitely still on edge. I've seen lots of things in my twenty years, but I have never experienced anything like that. My grandfather didn't tell me exactly when it happened, but from the details he told me, I place it in the late 60s to early 70s. My grandfather worked in the trades and lived in Ontario, Canada at the time. He was coming back from a job in Montreal, in Teguel, and was taking the 401 highway when he ran out of gas. Being Sunday night, and apparently at the time everything closes down, no gas stations were open. It was winter time in Canada and was about minus 40, meaning walking to a gas station in Guelph wasn't really an option. He walked a little bit and knocked on the closest house. He asks the guy who answered where he can get gas and the guy tells him that everything's closed and there's nothing he can do. My grandfather goes back to his service truck and sits there and he told me he thought he was going to die there. 
The guy approaches my grandfather's truck and offers to drive him to get some gas. Why he didn't offer before, I don't know. So they do. Funnily enough, where they end up is within close walking distance to where his truck ran out of gas. He thanks the man and offers to pay him for his help, but the guy refuses, and my grandfather heads off. He's driving for a little bit, and as he's driving, he sees a man hitchhiking on the side of the road. He thinks about the man from earlier, and how he helped him and decides to help this man out. Turns out this guy was with his wife and kid and ran out of gas too. The guy told him they'd been out there for two hours waiting for someone to come by. He was so cold, his hands were so cold and stiff he couldn't even open the door. So my grandfather helps them all in and takes them to the gas station. Had he not been helped by the guy earlier, the family probably would have frozen to death. The guy thanks my grandfather profusely and offers him some money. My grandfather declines and they eventually part ways. Fast forward a few years. My grandfather goes back to the area and wants to thank the man who helped him. He takes the same route down the 401 like he did before, but couldn't find the house. He searches a little bit, but where he swore he saw the house before, there was an empty lot. He goes up and tells the neighbour his story and says he wants to thank the man. The neighbour is confused and claims that no one has lived in that spot for over 50 years. My grandfather is taken aback by this because the incident only took place like three years ago. He left confused but never forgot about it. My grandfather went up to that area a few more times but was never able to find that house again. I don't think my grandfather believes it's a paranormal occurrence but I beg to differ. What do you guys think? I feel like some higher force saved my grandfather that night so he could later help the family from freezing to death. When I was about 16 or 17, I used to sneak out of my house to hang out with friends, often at one or two in the morning when the rest of the world was asleep. I found a sort of peace while walking the streets at that hour, everything still, everything silent, with nothing but the stars and the streetlights to give it colour. My friend at the time, let's call her Kimmy, often got into arguments with her father. Whenever she did, we would sneak out and wander the streets, talking until the sun rose. To this day she remains a dear friend of mine, and we often recall the following story when we see each other. This night we met up at the high school down the street from me. Our usual tradition was laying on the football field and gazing at the stars. Tonight, however, would be a night we'd never forget. As we lay on the turf, I noticed something out of the corner of my eye. Or rather, I almost didn't notice it. If it wasn't for the faint stars, it blocked out as it moved over us. It was a triangular outline. The light it gave off was only about as bright as the faintest star in the sky. Within the triangle, in each corner, were two concentric circles, again only outlines and barely recognisable. This craft was large, as big as my hand held at arm's distance in the night sky. It made no sound at all and flew directly over us from east to west. At first I didn't believe what I was seeing. Did you see that, or am I crazy? I ask Kimmy. Yeah, I see it, she says. There was an inescapable sense of disbelief in both our voices. Eventually the craft disappeared behind the buildings of our high school, but after 10 or 15 minutes it reappeared, this time heading from the south towards the north. A few weeks later I was at a party with a completely different group of friends and overheard a conversation between someone who lived in my town and a few people who lived a couple towns to the north. Three of them described the exact same craft and saw it the exact same night, without me recounting my story. Have you ever been visited by a ghost? I have many times. I have lived a very normal life good kids, good wife, stable life, and I assure you, this story is true. I am older and I have had paranormal experiences my whole life. They started when I was a young child. My goofy mom introduced me to a Ouija experience. 
After a short period of nice answers, the board turned on us and told us to go to hell. At first the cursor did a lengthy multiple figure eight, then it attempted to tell us to go to hell three different times. It was the only time I participated with a Ouija. I believe go to hell was an invitation, not a statement. Nevertheless, it started the attachment hauntings that have lasted decades and will probably go on as long as I'm above ground. Unfortunately, it is likely you also drag around some attachments. I am certain most people do. Sometimes I perceive others' attachments. Most people have absolutely no idea they are there with them. Things know I'm aware, so I have many more overt experiences, most unwanted. I have experienced sightings of black, fast-moving spectres, pokes and tugs, doors rattling intensely, footsteps walking towards me and knocking, objects moving right in front of me, small things falling nearby, and it happens occasionally in front of my family members. This stuff doesn't happen frequently, but it does happen at irregular times. Sometimes, for long periods of time, nothing happens at all. I have seen good things, like being reunited by deceased family members. I have a few terrible things that I apparently drag around as attachments. Sometimes I see ghosts. Well, I think they are ghosts. The most recent event was what I believed to be the spirit of an undiscovered suicide in the woods. I was on my trail bike in the forest, and I looked up a steep bluff. I could see through the trees some smoke that was about the size of a plastic bag, and it was floating through the trees. As it got closer to me, it remained static in a shape, but I could see it was translucent like smoke. It floated directly towards me about 80 to 100 yards, never deviating and floating right at me. It appeared to be floating right through the trees. It drifted right to my feet, then turned upwards, moving towards my head. It was then right in front of my eyes. Then it suddenly disappeared. Gone. A few days later, the person that had committed suicide I spoke of earlier was found very near where I was at the time. I will post the link to the news story in the comments below. If you've ever watched that psychic kids show, I feel exactly as they do, somewhat anxious and somewhat remote from people. I never invite anything. It just comes. My dad has had several encounters with things not of this earth, as he puts it. He wasn't sure who to tell his stories to about his encounters. I haven't had any myself, so I'm a little sceptical. However, seeing how he speaks and what it does to him to talk about it makes me believe. Needing to get his experience out there, he has submitted MUFON reports and contacted others. I wanted to share it with others as he told it. This one took place East Prairie, Missouri on 1st of October 1987, the first day he got to go bow hunting. With this encounter out of many I had, me and Corky were going hunting. It was 3am New Madrid County, Missouri. My friend Corky was driving us. We were on a two-lane highway. It was a bright, clear night. As we topped a hill there was a stationary object hovering about 30 yards ahead. It was three feet off the road and as wide as the road. It was about 35 to 40 foot tall. It was in the shape of a crystal faceted diamond that sparked every colour like a crystal when our truck's headlights hit it. We came to a complete stop on the road. Then we crept towards the crystal slowly. It started to move and we gave chase after it. It was a two mile straight stretch on the road. The craft stayed about 10 feet above the road. We lost the craft when it went over the trees on the levee at the curve at the road. We turned up onto the levee that borders the Mississippi River. We park on top of the levee at the hunting area. As I go to exit the vehicle I see out of the driver's window. I see the craft. It was hovering stationary eye level opposite a small thin tree line down the levee about 40 foot away. We observed it for roughly 10 minutes. Then another pair of hunters came upon our location. When their truck got close to us, the object blanked out, remaining in position but darkened to have no visibility, except a shimmer blur outline from the moonlight. The truck parks directly in front of us. 
I tell my friend sitting next to me that it's still there and you just can't see it, and the other hunters will never notice it. We exit the truck after the other hunters. We get our bows and equipment out from back off the truck. All of us move down the levee walking toward wooded area with logging roads. The two other hunters were about 20 feet ahead of me and my friend was three feet ahead of me. At the bottom of the levee I look back and saw the crystal craft had relit and is floating three foot above the cab of our truck making the truck visible. They kept walking and I stayed to watch for a few seconds. I caught up to my friend and told him to look back. He cussed me. I'm not fucking looking back now. I know it's there, damn it. I don't want to see it. At that moment I look back again at the truck and see that the craft has moved towards me down the levee, staying three feet off the road. The glow from the crystal lit up the ground behind us. It made an organic sound like someone was softly going, shh as it followed, and when it was stationary, I turned to my friend, saying, You have to look, it's close. As I did, I heard a voice in front of us in the dark. It was the other hunter, who was asking us, Which trail are we taking? As he did this, I realised he was looking in our direction, but didn't see the craft. He had no reaction to it, so I imminently looked back to see if it had disappeared again. Then as we got to the trail, my friend and I paused inside the tree line. I looked for the other hunters, and saw the craft is on the other side of the logging road in the tree line, following the other hunters. The ground and the trees lit up while the craft followed them silently. That was the point at which I can remember coming from the hunt, with it being daylight now, and not remembering going on the hunt. When we got back, the other hunters had left. I can't remember what we did during the hunt, It was about ten o'clock when me and Corky got back. This was only one of the times I have encountered this craft.